Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at solving x over x plus 3 is greater than 4 over x. Okay, so um, I'm going to go down the graphical route first. Now, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to combine these two expressions. So I'm going to, first of all, get everything onto one side of the inequality. So take away 4 over x is greater than 0. So then... I'm going to need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one top and bottom by x. So we're going to get x squared over x lots of x plus 3. Take away, and I'm going to multiply this one top and bottom by x plus 3. So 4 lots of x plus 3 over x, x plus 3 is greater than 0. So then, in the numerator, we've got x squared take away 4 lots of x plus 3 uh, over x, x plus 3. I'm going to leave that factorised. The, the numerator becomes x squared take away 4x take away 12 over x, x plus 3, which is greater than 0. And so that numerator factorises uh, to x take away 6 x plus 2 over x, x plus 3, and that's greater than 0. OK, so from here on out, I could either sketch the graph fairly accurately, um, or I could do the number line approach. So I'm going to sketch the graph just so you can see kind of like how that's built up and what it looks like. Um, obviously, this is a complicated one to sketch. Uh, so it's got actually two vertical asymptotes, when x is 0 and when x is minus 3. So when x is 0 is a problem, and when x equals minus 3 is a problem. And it's going to be crossing the x-axis at 6 and minus 2. So minus 2 and 6. OK. So, that's so far what we know. Now, you've got a quadratic over a quadratic. So, you could divide through by x squared, uh, top and bottom, and you'd get 1 over 1, plus other stuff. So, as x tends to infinity, they, we're going to tend towards 1 as a horizontal asymptote. So, I know y equals 1. It's going to do this. Um, I can't... It's not crossing the y-axis, so I can't find that out, because you've got a uh, vertical asymptote x equals 0. So the last thing really is to determine what's happening um, here. So it's got to tend towards y equals 1 and go through 6 and tends towards the x equals 0. So it's got to look like something like that. Here, you can't have it below here, below that y equals 1 line, because that would mean it would have to cross the x-axis again, which we know it doesn't. So that means the graph has to be up here. Now, the only other bit is, right, what's going on um, here? So I need to know what's happening at minus 1. Is it positive? Is it negative? OK. So I'm going to substitute minus 1 into this. So we're going to get uh, minus 1 take away 6 times by minus 1 plus 2 over minus 1 times by minus 1 plus 3. And we get 7 halves, so something positive. So actually, because it's positive, it must be coming down, sorry, up from this point, through minus 2, and then to, uh, tending towards the next asymptote. OK? It's got to be this way round, rather than going that way round, because we know here it's above the x-axis. So this is what the graph actually looks like for this function. Now, I'm being asked, where is this above the x-axis? So it is above it uh, here, when x is less than minus 3. It's above the x-axis here, between minus 2 and 0. And it's above the x-axis here, when x is greater than 6. OK? So that's... They are the three separate distinct regions for which this is true. Now, if you didn't want to sketch the graph like I did, remember you can use the number line approach. 
So the number line approach, what you want to do is you want to identify where the critical points are, which, what you need to consider. So you've got 6 and minus 2. So you've got minus 2 and 6. And you also want to consider where the asymptotes are. So 0 and minus 3. Okay, so minus 3 and 0. So then you want to check each of the regions. So, um, first of all, I'm going to substitute in minus 4. Um, so we've got minus 4, take away 6, times by minus 4. You could use the table function, I guess, to do this. Uh, minus 4 times minus 4 plus 3. OK, to help. And so that's got us 5, which is positive. So we're positive there. Now I want to substitute in, like, uh, minus 2.5. So minus 2.5 for each of the 4s. And we get minus 17 fifths, so we're negative there. Now I'm going to substitute in minus 1. OK, for the next region. Oh, minus 1. And we get 7 halves, so it's positive there. Then I'm going to substitute in 1 for the next region. And we get minus 15 corners, so it's negative there. And I'm going to substitute in 7 for the last region. And we get 9 over 70, so positive. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. OK, so where is the graph above the x-axis? Well, it's positive there, there, and there, OK, as identified. OK, so personally, I would say that the easiest way here, because this is now the graphs are getting quite complicated to sketch. So probably the easiest way is to go through this method and then the line method. OK, use the number line. Now, perfectly happy to use the um, multiplying by the denominator squared. OK, but you might be guessing as to where this is now going to go. OK, because we're going to get into cortic territory here. OK, so let's see that. So what I'm going to have to do is multiply both sides by x plus 3 squared and x squared. So let's multiply both sides by x plus 3 squared first. So I'm going to get x lots of x plus 3 on the left-hand side and 4 lots of x plus 3 squared on the right-hand side over x. But I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared as well. So uh, I'm going to get an extra x and x squared there. So I've multiplied both sides by oh, x cubed, actually x cubed. I've multiplied both sides by x squared, multiplied both sides by x plus 3 squared. OK? And so this is what I would end up with. So I need to expand this out. So I'll get x to the 4 plus 3x cubed is greater than 4 lots of. So I've got x squared plus 6x plus 9 times x. So x to the 4 plus 3x cubed is greater than 4x cubed plus 24x squared plus 36x. Now, we want to move everything onto the left-hand side. So x to the 4, uh, take away x cubed, take away 24x squared, take away 36x is greater than 0. And then I'm going to solve the cortic. So 1 minus 1 minus 24 minus 36 and 0. So we're going to have a cortic uh, at 6, 0, minus 2 and minus 3. So what were they? We had 6, 0, minus 2, minus 3. So minus 3, minus 2, 0 and 6. Where is the graph above the x-axis? There there and there, which is x is less than minus 3, x is between minus 2 and 0, and x is greater than 6. 
as we got there. Okay? Now, you can see that actually it wouldn't take much for this method um, to get you into quintics as well and go up to higher degree polynomial problems. Okay? So by that point, you might actually be finding that the rearranging and using the number line method would actually um, be much more effective in the long term.